security 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 when it comes to devops it's all about automation and moving fast but without sacrificing security your development pipeline application infrastructure everything needs to be secured from potential threats that can cause business loss also these days with many companies adopting remote work there is a need to securely and easily access cloud resources without any issues and to do this companies often use vpns or batch server host which are not so easy to set up and also not very secure and this is why you need to use twingate so twingate is a secure remote access solution for an organization's data application or environment which may be either in the cloud or on premises and this may make it sound it like a vpn but it's not it's actually better easier and more secure so twingate uses zero trust network access model which is a more modern and more secure way of accessing remote applications securely and seamlessly without any need of bastion host or vpns okay so i'm here on my computer screen and let me show you how you can use twingate to access private applications on aws cloud now to use twingate you need to go to the official website which is twingate.com which will bring you to this page where you can read about twingate different benefits of using twingate compared to vpns and all that but right now twingate offers different pricing models so if you are a small team or an individual or working with twingate you can go with the free model or else you can choose teams business but if you are bigger organization you can also use the enterprise option here for this demo i'm going to be using the free version and you can also go ahead with using this which is free uh, so go ahead with creating an account i already have an account with twingate so i want to log into it for you you need to create an account which can be done using an email id so just go ahead add your email and get started with using twingate i'm going to go ahead and log into my account once you log in this is the dashboard you get so you can see network team devices all those here now twingate works in a way where you first need to create a network install the connector then add the resources you want to connect and lastly use the twingate client to actually access that So you need to first start with creating your network and Twingate has excellent documentations that can help you with almost everything. So you can see how you can start with creating a network. If you want to know how Twingate actually works, you can also read from their documentation on how Twingate uses connectors and relays to access private application. So they have excellent documentation and if you want to learn more, you can definitely check that out. For now I'm going to go ahead with creating a network. So I'll go here remote networks and you can see I already have one network created. I was playing around so this is when I created that but I'm going to show you how to create one so let's click on remote network and you can choose where do you want this network to be created either in AWS or Azure or Google Cloud or on premise etc for now we are using AWS so let's go with AWS and I'm going to name this as uh, secure vpc okay let's add remote network here once you click on remote network you need to then install connectors so you can see there are two connectors here These are two connectors for high availability, but you can choose to install one of them. If you are using Twingate in production, I would recommend you installing these two connectors on different instances in the same network. So to provide access, you need to first deploy a connector. I'm going to click on Deploy Connector option here. So you can see to deploy a connector, there are different ways. You can use Docker to deploy a connector using these commands. You can also use Helm charts. You can use AWS ECS, Azure, or simply install it on Linux using the commands. Also, if you're using AWS, Twingate has a cloud formation template that you can use, which will automatically go ahead with creating a stack. And for you to do this, you need to re-authenticate. Once you're authenticated, you can then select the region where you want to deploy this connector, and you can click on Open AWS, which will take you to the cloud formation page where you can go ahead with deploying this connector as a stack without you doing anything. So this helps you deploy a connector automatically using cloud formation. But for this demo, I'm going to be using uh, Linux because I'll be creating an instance and deploying this connector on AWS EC2 instance okay so i have this EC2 instance ready i'm going to connect to it and then run this commands to install the connector so i can also customize if i want to get logs so i can choose to put logs and get also to get the logs but i'm not able to do that for now let's copy the command and wait for the connection after you paste it so i want to paste this here now once done you should be able to see a, a green symbol a green color here and also connected So now it is connected. Let's refresh the page, and you can see it's connected. Or uh, we also have a controller and relay connected now. Okay, now that the connector is deployed, let's move ahead. I'm going to be deploying Jenkins application on AWS EC2 privately, which can be accessed only through Twingate, not through public internet. 
So let's go to EC2 instance and create a Jenkins application on EC2. Let's name this as Jenkins. If you are not aware about Jenkins, Jenkins is a very popular CI CD tool and I have videos about Jenkins on this channel. So make sure you subscribe to Cloud Champ for more DevOps and cloud content. Okay, this is the one I'm going to be using. So let's click on select. And then we can have options to fill in all these details. I'm going to leave all this as it is. Uh, we have Jenkins selected as an AMI. One thing to make sure is to deploy your instance in the same network as you have your connector in. So I'm going to be deploying it here. And I'm going to set also auto assign as disable to make it private, not public. And that's when I'm going to go ahead with creating a launch this instance and this instance will be created. So let's wait for this to be created completely. You can see there's no public IP address. There's only private IP address. Okay, so now the application is ready and it's also running. So let's copy this private IP and see if we are able to connect to this or not. So we can see it's loading and very soon we will get an error saying either connection not established or timeout because this is private and will not be accessed on public internet. So let's see how we can use TwinGate to do that. So I'm going to go back to TwinGate dashboard. Once you have your connector ready and deployed, you then need to go to resources section. So you need to see, you can see here create resource option. Let's click on create resource. Let's run this as I don't know, Jenkins and then put the IP address of the application. It could be IP address, domain name or side range. After you add a resource, you can choose which group or services do you want to give access to. So I have a group named as everyone and also a service account which is easy to so i want to choose everyone here and then click on grant access if you want to create new users or groups you can do that from the team section here so if you click on teams you can see you can add user you can add create groups you can also create service accounts similarly you can also see which devices are connected so right now my iphone and my laptop is connected here so now we have added a resource which is our jenkins application even though we have added it it's still showing us this error which is not able to connect because you need to also install the TwinGate client. So I have TwinGate client installed on my laptop, also on my phone. You can see this is the app and I'm able to see uh, the resource that I created or added. So you can see Jenkins is present here and to install it, you can search for TwinGate client and you can see all the options. So if you're using Linux or Windows or Mac OS, you can go ahead with installing that. For me to actually start it, I need to run the command sudo TwinGate setup. So when I understood sudo twin gate setup, after putting my password, it's asking me for a few details. Do I agree? Okay, I agree. This is my network. Here. Okay, 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 okay. And now you can see I need to authenticate. Once I authenticate, it shows me this message which is authenticated and the online user is online now. So now I have added my resource, I have the client ready. I should be able to access the application. So I'm going to refresh this and you will very soon see that you can access Jenkins which is on a private network and you are accessing this without using VPNs or Bash your host. There's no complex setup. It's you just need a single tool and you need to have a client. I'll also show you how I can use this Jenkins on my phone as well. So I'm going to copy and open this in a browser. You can see here this is my Jenkins on my phone and it's actually I have a different network. And this is my different method, I'm still able to do this because I have a TwinGate client connector. Now let me show you another real DevOps use case. So I have this RDS database, which is not public. And I will be showing you how you can connect this using TwinGate. So similarly, as we did to our Jenkins, I also need to add this as a resource first. Uh, before I do that, let me show you that I'm not able to connect to this. I'm going to go ahead and open up my terminal. In this, I'm going to say MySQL, H, the endpoint, hyphen p3306 uh, hyphen u admin and hyphen p for the password if i put my password here i will get another very soon saying that i will not be able to connect to this as it's not public so usually in devops we use uh, bastion host we use proxies to configure this or to access databases and private subnet but uh, you don't need to do anything extra you just need to use twingate so I'm going to copy this endpoint and go to my networks. Sorry, go to my resources here. In this, I'm going to add a resource, select the remote network, which is the secure VPC. Put the endpoint and I'm going to name this as prod database. So prod db, let's create resource. Once I have this resource, I'm going to select to give access to everyone in my group and grant access here. 
Uh, now let's try the same thing again. The same command, putting the password. And you see, we are now inside the database. So this is how easy it is to access private applications using Twingate without any extra configurations or headache. But that's not all. Twingate can also be used with CI-CD pipelines to make sure only authorized persons can trigger wills. It can also be used to securely access Kubernetes cluster, also for Git repositories and lot more. You can check out all different use cases on the Twingate documentation. So I hope now you have complete idea of how Twingate works, how to create networks, how to deploy connector, how to add resources in the console. But let's say you are a developer or a DevOps engineer like me, who likes to do everything through code, Twingate can also do that. Twingate supports infrastructure as code tools like Terraform and Pulumi. So if you want to create networks or manage Twingate programmatically, you can also use Terraform or Pulumi. Twingate has a Terraform provider. Uh, apart from this, Twingate also has a Pulumi package. So if you have someone who has experience with Pulumi, you can start using Twingate through Pulumi. Twingate has this documentation and a video explaining on how you can deploy Twingate using Pulumi. Let me show you an example of how to use Twingate with Terraform. So if you see this documentation for the Twingate provider, for you to use Twingate, you need to have the network and the API token. So I have this code here, which I was using to deploy Twingate through Terraform. And you can see inside this Terraform TFS, I have these two variables, which are the API key and the network. If you go to Twingate, you need to go to settings and you need to go to API. Click on generate token. You will need to authenticate. Once you get the token, you can put this inside the variable, which is TG underscore API underscore key. For the network, the network is the same as you have in the URL. So my network name is going to be cloudchan 44 So once you do this, you can go ahead with using Twingate through Terraform by simply running Terraform commands. Rather than doing things in the console, you can use Twingate with Terraform for all the major clouds like AWS, GCP, or Azure. So this is all about Twingate. Make sure to check it out. And if you have any questions, any doubt, do let me know in the comment section. Thank you and have a good day. Bye.